I'm Kathy Thomas, and joining me today will be the executive chef at Bruno's Trattoria in Brea, Christian De La Vara. And chef's going to share the secrets of his pasta fagioli. You know, my Italian teacher in college would have called this dish pasta e fagioli. But what do you call it? Um, at the restaurant, we call it pasta fagiol. There you go. But however you do it, I know you do it in a delicious way. So let's Thank get you. started. First, we want to go ahead and cut uh, our vegetables. So we have our, our carrots, our celery, and our onions. So next, we're going to go into uh, one of the most important parts of the soup, the uh, sage, rosemary, and bay leaf. And this is called a bouquet garni? Bouquet garni, yes. It can be called a sachet as well. Mm -hmm. So if you do see that in a recipe, they're referring to using a bouquet garni inside the cheesecloth. We're gonna go ahead and start off with a little bit of olive oil. We're gonna render off uh, the pancetta here. We're gonna basically cook this down probably about five minutes. You wanna get a little bit of color on it. We're gonna go ahead and add our mirepoix here, our sliced garlic. Then you're gonna wanna sweat this down uh, till the vegetables are nice and tender. Then we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do our initial seasoning of salt and pepper. Get all those nice brown bits picked up with the uh, wine. We're gonna go ahead and add the um, bouquet or sachet. We're gonna go ahead and add the chicken stock. Next, we're gonna add our cranberry beans. And these have been soaked overnight? These have been soaked overnight. At this point, we're just gonna have this simmer nice and slow. About an hour and a half, and you test those beans to see if they're soft in the center. Correct. The beans are perfectly cooked on this one here. Okay, now what about the bouquet garni? Um, before you go ahead and puree, you're gonna take the bouquet garni out. So it's out already. It's already right. out. I'm worried about that, chef. <laughs> That's okay. Puree those beans and vegetables for about, I'd say maybe 10 to 15 seconds. So you're gonna go ahead and add your dittolini pasta, and you can substitute any other pasta if you'd like, depending on what you have in your pantry. But mm -hmm. this is really traditionally the, uh, the pasta that I think goes best with this. You wanna make a small taste. You should always taste everything that you're doing. I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper. Oh yeah. To finish the soup off, chopped Italian parsley, some freshly grated Parmesan, and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on top. You want a real high quality oil on top. For a finishing oil on a soup, you're yeah. gonna want something that has really a lot of flavor. I'm getting hungry as well. Can home cooks make this ahead and reheat it? Yes, you can. All right, so all they need to have is their, their finishing elements, heat it up, dish it up, garnish it, and they're done. This is something that would actually be better probably the next day. Thank you, chef, it's delicious. Thank you. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. I love fresh berries on ice cream or on cake, and a way to amp the flavor is just spike it with a little honey and liqueur and fruity wine. So here we go. Here's a half cup of fruity wine. I'm gonna put three tablespoons of honey, and this is a beautiful local honey. Then I'm gonna whisk those together. Then I wanna add a little liqueur. This is uh, creme de cassis, which is spiked with black currants. Today I'm using strawberries because they're what look best at the market. And this is just gonna get stirred and refrigerated for at least a half an hour or up to three or four hours. Angel food cake, oh, I love angel food cake, but you could use pound cake, you could use ice cream. Oh, chocolate ice cream would be really good. And here are the berries that have been soaking in that beautiful liquid. You can put a little whipped cream on the top if you like. I'm gonna put on a little dollop of creme fraiche. And if you like, you can sweeten the creme fraiche with a little bit of powdered sugar. And then just a little sprig of mint. Fast and easy and delicious too. And if you want, you can spoon more of the liquid around the base of the cake just before serving at the table. It couldn't get easier than that. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new. Have an adventure. <laughs>